Konnichiwa! Turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese, I really think so. Yoshinoya lovers, unite! Today, we will be making Yoshinoya's famous beef bowl. It's not going to be exactly the same because I don't know the recipe for their famous beef bowl, but it's going to be pretty similar. All the ingredients were purchased from Mitsua, which is a Japanese supermarket. Here's everything that you're going to need. First thing you'll need is some thinly sliced beef and look for the packages labeled as sukiyaki or shabu shabu. My first choice was the sukiyaki beef, but unfortunately they were sold out. So I had purchased a tray of shabu shabu beef instead. If you cannot find this particular type of beef, then you can buy ribeye and then thinly slice it. You will need one onion. If you're using a large onion, then just use half of it and thinly slice it. Um, if you're using a small onion, then go ahead and use the entire thing. You will also need a small piece of ginger, about half the size of your thumb, and then just grate it. You will also need some soy sauce. You can use the Japanese soy sauce like the Kikkoman brand, but I'm going to use Maggi seasoning instead. Um, I just think it tastes better than regular soy sauce. I'm also going to be using sake and this is optional. If you don't want to use sake, you can just omit it. I'm also going to be adding mirin and when choosing your mirin, if possible, try to choose a mirin that does not contain corn syrup and we'll need sugar. Don't forget to give your honey some sugar tonight when he comes home from work. You'll need dashi as well, which is a Japanese soup stock powder. Now just a warning before you start making the stock, you might want to open up all your windows and turn on all the fans in the house because it ain't gonna smell like roses. <laughs> then you'll also need some hot water to make the dashi stock. Later, if you want, you can garnish your beef bowl with some chopped green onions, some chili pepper, um, this will also give it a little bit more flavor, or with some red pickled ginger. We've got everything that we need, so let's get started making the dashi stock. I just placed the bowl of water in the microwave for one minute to heat it up. Now I'm gonna add the dashi powder. Um, I only used half of a packet because it can be really overwhelming. So let's go ahead and add the dashi powder and give it a stir. Just stir it until it's dissolved. The powder is dissolved, so go ahead and set this aside. Now let's start making the sauce. First, we'll need some soy sauce, or like I said, you can use Maggi seasoning instead. Next, add the sugar. Add some mirin. And I'm going to add a little bit of sake. Let's go ahead and give this a stir until the sugar is dissolved. I almost forgot guys. We also need to cut the beef into bite-sized pieces. The beef is done. I just basically cut them in half and then separated them. Get everything ready because it's time to get cooking. In a saucepan, add the dashi stock. And then turn the heat to medium high. Now add the sauce. Give the sauce a stir and then bring it to a boil. Alrighty, the sauce has come to a boil, so let's add the beef. And then immediately turn off the heat. And okay, just give this a stir. We just want to slightly cook the beef at this point. You don't want to fully cook it. So once it's about, I say, 70% cooked, 
uh, we can remove the beef from the saucepan. So you're just going to cook it for about um, one to two minutes. Okay, that's good enough. So let's go ahead and remove the beef. So you can see that there's still some pink left. Set the beef aside and then turn the heat back on to medium high. Let's add the ginger and give it a stir. Okay. Let the sauce come to a boil. The sauce has come to a boil. Let's add the onions and then reduce your heat to medium. Give it a stir. And cover it with a lid. Then cook the onions for about four to five minutes until the onions are tender. Okie dokie, it's been five minutes. So let's check on the onions and see how tender they are. If you find that they are not tender enough for you, then go ahead and cook it for another minute or two. But this is pretty good for me. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and add the beef. Add the beef in there. Now you don't want to overcook your beef. So as soon as you don't see any more pink in the meat, go ahead and remove it from the saucepan. Mix it up with the onions. It should be very quick. It should be only like a minute or two is all you need to cook the beef before it turns all brown. Okay. Like I said, once the beef is cooked through, immediately remove it from the saucepan. So you're going to cook it for about one or two minutes and it's done. There you have it. Okay, let's go ahead and remove it from the pan. Let's take the beef out. Because you don't want to leave it in there because the meat will continue to cook. So let's, so let's take them all out. Now you're ready to place the beef on top of some white rice. All right, now how super simple was that? If you want, you can eat this with some steamed or sauteed veggies. Doesn't that look delicious and just like Yoshinoya? So this amount of beef here should serve about two to three people. I like to eat my gudon with some veggies and I didn't have any fresh veggies. So I just used a bag of frozen veggies that I had in the freezer. I went ahead and microwaved it for six minutes. I added a little bit of water to the veggies and microwaved it. Add the veggies to a skillet. And then turn the heat to high. Now I'm going to take some of the sauce that we had made earlier for the gudon and pour it over the veggies. Cook the veggies until all the sauce has evaporated. Okay, the sauce has completely evaporated and you can start to hear the sizzle. That's when it's going to start to brown the veggies. You don't want to burn the veggies, you just want to slightly brown them. <laughs> so you don't want to cook it for too long. Do about two or three minutes or so. Alright, that's good enough for me. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat. And you can see some browning on the cauliflower. Let's see if I can grab one here. <laughs> yeah, so you can see it. There you go. So that's good enough. I got my beef, my veggies, my white rice. I'm ready to assemble my beef bowl. Just take some beef and place it on top of your bowl. Some people like to add the sauce too, but I don't. I kind of like it dry like this. 
I don't like soggy um, rice. <laughs> so let's add some on top. Forget to leave some room for the veggies. Now add the vegetables. Vegetables are good for you, so don't forget to add a lot of them. All right, I think the bowl is done. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want, you can also garnish with some chopped green onions, but I'm not going to do that today because I'm going to be eating it with veggies, so I don't feel like I need to add the green onions. But I am going to add the red ginger because I love this stuff. I just like can't seem to have enough of it. <laughs> and I'm also going to add the red chili pepper to give it a little bit more flavor. And there you have it, Yoshinoya style beef bowl. I couldn't resist. I have already tried a piece of the beef and it is so flavorful and yummy. If you like to eat this for breakfast, all you have to do is add an egg on top of your beef. Whether you eat this for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it's all good. This is a quick and easy recipe, perfect for those busy weeknights. Dinner can be done in less than 30 minutes. And now you can enjoy the beefy goodness of gudon from the comfort of your own home. Arigato for watching my videos. Have a great day, y'all, and I'll see you later, alligator. Bye! And before I leave, don't forget to check out my Facebook page for updates on my channel and more.